Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this full CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also, remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. Cisco don't expect you to be a developer who can write your own code for the CCNA exam, but they do expect you to know some of the basic terminology around development and the way that developers work. So I'm going to cover those in this short lecture here. First up is about Python. And Python is typically the language of choice for network programmability for several reasons. It's relatively easy to learn and there's many different training resources available. The Python scripting language is human readable and it's easy by reading through it to see what's going on. It's free, open source. It can be installed on all popular operating systems. It's actually built into Linux and Mac by default. And it's easy to find network automation code samples. So you don't have to start from a blank page all the time. For anything that you want to do, you can typically find a code sample where somebody's already done that. And then you maybe just need to modify it slightly for your particular environment. Next thing is Git. Git is a version control system which tracks changes in source code and files. It's typically used for software development, but it can also provide version control for any type of files. With most client server version control systems, so other version control systems do exist, but Git is by far the most popular one these days. With a client server version control system, the code has to be checked out and can only be worked on by one developer at a time. So with Git, the benefits that you get, you get the version control there. So it keeps track of the changes that have been made and it's very easy to roll back to a previous version. It's also very useful when you're working as part of a team where multiple people can work on the code at the same time. If you've got a client server version, that's where there's one master copy of it and only one person can work on the code at a time. Git is different, it's a distributed version control system. So with it being a distributed version control system, every Git directory on every computer is a fully fledged repository with complete history and full version tracking abilities. So when you've got multiple developers working on the same project, they can all have their own separate copy of the project and they can start their own branches from there and it's very easy to merge everything into the same code. Organizations do typically designate one repository as the master copy just for ease of management, but the architecture of Git is it's distributed. Every separate repository is a complete separate copy of the repository. Okay, so that was Git. That gives you your version control. It makes it easy to work on code when you're working as part of a team. There's also GitHub. Now, Git and GitHub are two different things. So Git is the version control software. GitHub is a Git repository hosting service, which adds many of its own features. A repository, by the way, is just a place that you can keep things. So if you've got a source code repository, it's where you're keeping all the files that are making up that source code. Repositories in GitHub can be private or they can be publicly shared. They can be easily copied between users and task management tools are available, which make it easier when you're working as part of a team. And control mechanisms provide security and resolve conflicts. As I mentioned earlier with Git, it's distributed and you can have multiple people working on it at the same time. So rather when you've only got one single master copy, which one person can work on at a time, because it's distributed, it is possible that conflicts where can arise, where you've got people that have made changes to the same part of the code and it's different changes. There are tools within Git and GitHub to help you resolve that. Okay, the last thing to talk about here is CI CD. CI stands for continuous integration and CD is continuous delivery 
or continuous deployment. You can use either one of those terms, they're both CD. CI-CD is a set of operating principles and practices that enable application development teams to deliver code changes more frequently and reliable. So CI-CD, it's not a thing that you can touch. It's not like a piece of software. It is really best practices for how software development teams work now. With software development teams producing code, frequent changes are more efficient than rolling them up into large change windows. So when the code is written and it's ready to be put into production, it's seen as a best practice now that you do that frequently. It's better to have frequent changes than rolling up all your changes into a huge bundle and then doing that infrequently, I mean, putting it into production. Automation of building, testing, and deployment allows you to make those frequent changes and still having them being quality changes without causing problems. And the implementation when you're doing this is known as your CI CD pipeline. Software tools such as Jenkins and Travis CI can aid management of the pipeline in your environment. Okay, so that was all the basic information around development required for the CCNA that I needed to talk about here. I'll see you in the next lecture. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can click on the link above my head or in the description to enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.